Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So from this video, I'm thinking of starting a new series uh, where we would be discussing the latest advancements, news, any research papers, cool things that are happening in the field of data science and machine learning. Uh, because the idea is not only we, you know, solve and learn different skills in Python, MySQL, etc. But to actually apply that in real world, right? Uh, and don't worry, I'm not going to stop those question videos because that is going to come regularly as it is till now, right? Uh, I'm planning to do this maybe two or three times in a month. If you guys like it or if you find it useful, then I can even increase the frequency in the future. Right. Okay. So in this video, uh, we are going to discuss about two things, right? Uh, first thing is, you know, uh, there is a new software from DeepMind, which actually can write computer programs based on the descriptions. Uh, and then uh, secondly, we are also going to see like how there is a a robot that is powered by uh, AI or machine learning and you know it is trying to save crops from various diseases and pets and if it and tries to you know uh, predict that whether it needs more water and things like that right so let's start with the first one so basically before this DeepMind's alpha code so this is the software called alpha code uh, created by DeepMind, right so before this there used to be a software called codex created by open ai uh, the company which recently created chat gpt which like which is in the news and has blown up quite disproportionately right uh, so before this there used to be a codex system but you might be thinking like what is the use of this right so what is a use of a software like this if you are a working professional you will relate to this there might be n number of times in your you know day to day activities that someone who don't don't know how to code or is not technical enough right in this uh, data science or machine learning stuff so they might be you know asking you that hey uh, could you do this for me or i want to do something can you get this data for me or something like that which is which to you might seem very trivial but since they don't know uh, like they don't they ask you right so wouldn't it be good that if you know such a software exists that for people People who are non coder or not from a technical background, they can, you know, uh, for their whatever purpose they want that they can, you know, just input a, Hey, can you write a code for to do this? And you know, the software does that and the person is able to solve his or her problem instantaneously. Right? So that is, uh, the advantages of having this. Now, uh, what happens is that, so codex was created by open ai right and it was created in the same way the way they created chat gpt so chat gpt and like gpt3 which you are seeing here right so basically gpt3 is the you know the umbrella version and when it was you know narrowed down to have a conversation like feature so that came out to be known as chat gpt right so chat gpt the name says it all right so basically gpt3 is what a large language model so how what what has happened is that you know so billions of you know online articles books etc they were trained using natural language processing right and uh, whatever model that was came out of it is called you know uh, was called G gpt3 uh, and if you think about it right what is code well whatever you write in codes right so it is actually uh like it's not natural language but it is you know you are going using the words from a language right uh like for english language etc so basically what happens if you apply the same logic there right the way you created gpt3 by you know uh training it on wikipedia articles and whatnot different books if you train the same thing on different codes then it is possible to come up with a software or basically a model that can you know uh, learn the parameters of the codes right so that is how codex was developed and like when people tasted it like it was good it was fine but not very good enough you know to solve tricky problems so what alpha code did was it is again the same logic as codex right uh, using a language model uh, 
But the reason why alpha code is better than codex is the way they have, you know, the researchers have trained it. So firstly, they did the same thing as codex, right? That, you know, train uh, this on a lot of GitHub uh, online code. So basically getting the code from GitHub, right? And then training them uh, so that, you know, uh, the model knows, okay, how to write code, right? So whenever you try to learn a code, how do you learn that? You need to know, okay, what are the different things or functions that already exist? What is the sync? Text that you use, etc., etc., right? So, the same thing happened with the model, and then what this did was they also trained the model to you know translate the problems into code. So, basically, it is just like you know how a human will solve a problem that you read the description of the problem and then you try to familiarize. Okay, let's break it down into you know, let's say step one, step two, step one, let's create a function which will do certain things, then the output of that function is going to do certain things, etc. etc. So that is what they trained the model, the alpha code to do, right? And because alpha code was trained to do that, then, you know, when you are going to perform, give a fresh problem, then what it will do? Since it has learned that, okay, how to convert or translate a description into a code, so it will try to do that. And then since the code already knows, that alpha code already knows how to write, you know, a program because it has been trained to learn syntax and conventions as well, right, in the beginning. So that is why it is more powerful than the original codex by OpenAI, right? An amazing thing is that, you know, so alpha code, it is not going to, you know, generate only one solution. It is, you know, having a lot of different solutions or different ways to do, because obviously many ways to solve a problem, right? So that is what alpha code is doing. Like it is what they are calling candidate code solutions, right? So there are different candidate solutions and based on like which one is better and which one is not, it tries to, you know, filter them out. So even before doing that, it says that, okay, let's say uh, alpha code generated, okay, there are 100 solutions to solve this problem right so of those 100 like it tries to you know do a clustering that okay these 10 are very similar in nature of what we are trying to do uh, and their outputs are you know very similar as well so okay let's keep them in one cluster etc etc right and then uh, you know from those different clusters it will try to you know submit the solutions and you know whichever passes all the test cases or is best performing it will keep that right so like when the numbers came in so about one third of the uh, you know questions that were given to alpha code was solved by it right and these mind you these are so alpha code is trained for tricky problems right so they have been uh, you know trained for tricky pop problems so uh, one third of those tricky problems alpha code was you know able to solve which codex was i think less than 10 percent right and then you know when this alpha code was put into an online competition with other people so about half of the human competitors were below alpha code right and the surprising thing that you know the researcher mentioned that you know it is not just reproducing what it has learned so basically like as i mentioned right so alpha code is being trained on different code snippets from github right thousands and thousands of uh, code snippets but actually it is not just you know it is not learning that okay if you want to you know uh, do a sum of two numbers so this is a function it learned that and anytime it has to do that it is just copy pasting that it is not doing that right it is basically coming up with a creativity it is you know creating something entirely new right which is not even in the training stuff right so that is pretty interesting right also uh like whatever uh, initially we discussed like the benefits of this but the reverse thing is what is you know going to make this very useful for people and even all of us right who are you know watching this if you have written code sometime in your life right and you try to revisit that or you have to you know uh, like let's say one of your colleague leaves the company and then you have to you know go through his or her code it is a nightmare right if it is not properly commented right so if you use the reverse of it right so if this software can do the opposite this is a code and you know what it is trying to do what the code is trying to do if you can you know know or something can convert that into plain english or a language that humans understand easily right so it would be a game changer right so that is why you know this 
this is a great stuff from deep mind right alpha code uh, so if you want to know more about it right so this is how you know they have written a entire blog regarding like you know how they are trying to approach this like what's the logic that alpha code uses and all that and there are some even questions that you know uh, so this was the problem description and the solution that it came up with right so if you you know just uh, if you pause this or i will share the link in the description but if you pause this or if you you know go through these links and you can try to see that okay there are tons and tons of you know questions which it has generated solutions to right so let me know like apart from this what other application this thing can have right so it let me know in the comment section now let's move to the second thing so actually what has happened is like there is a startup called meropi which has come up with a ai you know ai powered robot which they are calling i think senti5 right so they are calling it senti5 uh, so basically what happens is that you know so uh, for example let's say there you have a, a acre of land right and you have some crops that are you know ripe and uh, you want to see that or you want to monitor the crops so in back in the old days what used to happen is that the farmer or a person used to you know go around that go inside and that is damaging of the crops because the, you know the farmer has to walk across the field and that is like problematic and if the crop is like very dense right so it would be very difficult for a person to you know navigate each and every leaf or like most of the stuff right so then we came to a position where you know we are were using drones right so drones could you know fly above uh, you, they were used to spray pesticides fertilizers etc right uh, and but the problem with them is like they, it can only have a top view of the crops right so the this robot senti5 right so it is look something like this since it has no wheels it just has spokes right so the area of contact is like minimal and because of that the damage to the crops becomes minimal right and since it has uh, you know two cameras so it can image crops from above as well as below right and then it you what it does is it combines those images right so basically what happens is like so in this software the farmer you know it will you can you know write the boundaries of your field right and then up to 50 acres i think in a day it can transverse uh, and once it has all the images right and then it will use the ai algorithms you know so there is the already trained ai algorithm it will feed this data and then based on that there will be predictions right so which area or which spot needs uh, more water where like there are there might be possibility of diseases or pest etc right so it, it it makes the task very easy right and a good thing about this is that you know it can use different types of crop like it can inspect different type of crops right uh, so like the arms can extend the width it adjustable etc right so yeah this is like another great example of where you know ai is being used uh to you know minimize damages etc so yeah in this video i think these were the two things that i wanted to discuss uh, let me know if you guys come across any interesting you know news or articles or research papers or links or any videos that you might see that okay this is some something really cool let me know in the comment section below and until then i will see you guys in the next video